for knees. Today, we're gonna change positions and notice the sensation of your knees in a different way. So you're gonna go on your stomach. If you're not comfortable lying on your stomach, you can always take a towel roll or a pillow or a folded blanket and put it right at your belly. That might make it a little bit more comfortable in the back and the hips in order to lie on your stomach. You also might need a strap. You could use that kind of strap, a yoga strap, or a band. Either one of those uh, will be good for this. You might not need it at all, but it, it just depends on how much your knee bends. So let's go over onto the stomach and notice the knees in a little bit different way. I love the position of the stomach. I just don't, don't think we get, as adults, we don't get over onto our stomach enough. I know some people sleep that way, but in general, people avoid getting on their stomach. So you're gonna go all the way down onto your stomach. That will also kind of help flatten your back out, maybe feel a little bit more comfortable in your stomach. And on your stomach, I just want you to bend your knee. It doesn't take a lot of effort in this position to bend your knee. It's great to do this on, the, on your bed and maybe let your toes hang out over the end of the bed. But what you really want to notice, the muscle that works here is your hamstring. Your hamstring bends your knee. And so you first want to bring some awareness to those hamstrings. Feel the effort in the back of the thigh that it takes in order to bend that knee. And also just see what it feels like in the knee itself to bend. As you pull that heel towards your bottom, how does that feel in your knee? And then you want to switch and do the other side. Do several repetitions. You know, the muscle, the hamstring muscle is a nice large muscle. So you should be able to do several repetitions of this. If your hamstring's not very strong after 15 or so, you might begin to feel a little more effort, some fatigue in that hamstring. But just do that several times. And that's a way to sort of get that hamstring muscle into your awareness. You want to be able to feel that muscle. You want to be able to feel the hamstring muscle contract without feeling the glute contract doesn't matter really what your foot is doing but it's not that's why it's nice to kind of be out over the edge of a, a bed so you can get, let your toes just fall naturally but when I bend my knee I can feel my whole pelvis rolling so that gives me a little indication of the muscles that are in the front of the thigh the quad and so that's where the next sensation is that we want to feel so can you on your stomach Reach one hand back, really reach it back as much as you can, then bend the knee. Can you grab your toe? Grab the top of your foot. Grab the ankle, but make sure your spine is nice and straight. And just hold that position first with a nice long arm and see how it feels in the front of the thigh. So we've activated or done some contractions of the hamstring muscle but now we're lengthening that quad. And so in order to keep your hips down, you might need to engage your glutes a little bit to stabilize the pelvis and then pull by bending the elbow, pull heel to the same side of your bottom and get a nice long stretch of the quad and one of those quads attaches all the way up in front of the hip so you'll get a stretch maybe in front of the hip all the way down along the quad and into that knee joint depending on how much stiffness you have in the knee joint if you can't do this that's where the strap comes in so you can take any strap any long piece of material you can take a resistance band that has a lot of tension in it my strap has a loop in it so i can loop that strap around my ankle 
I can either hold it the same way that I was doing, just gives me a little more length to gently pull on that, or you could take the tail of your strap and go overhead. Again, stabilize with your muscles, drawing that tailbone down, tighten your bottom, and then pull heel towards your bottom. Now this is tight on a lot of people, this quad, this muscle, and keeping the hip in a nice neutral position really puts some tension on the muscle that, the quad division that crosses the hip. So make sure that you're not pulling too hard, but stay there and breathe for several breaths. See if you can find the position that gives you a gentle stretch. What I tell people when they're doing a stretch is that they're able to still breathe deeply and controlled while they're doing the stretch. So you pull on that foot just to the point where you feel that stretch. You take three or four nice big breaths and then you pull again. Take three or four nice big breaths and then pull again. That's a bit of a, a progressive, static progressive stretch. So that way you can hold it for a minute and a half, maybe even two minutes if you pull on it four times, three or four times, and then you can do a nice long stretch and get a deep stretch to that quad and to that hip flexor, the, the, the hip flexor portion of the quad muscle. And you might also feel it in that knee. It's a great position to get more motion in that knee. So the comparison is, just to review, the last time we did the knee flexion position this way, trying to walk the heel closer to the bottom to feel the stretch in the knee. So in this position, this position is not as much tension on that quad because it's, the, the hip is also bent. And in comparison, then rolling over on your stomach, you've got the hip in a straight position and then you're trying to bend the knee. So whether you use your hand or you use a strap in order to get into that position, there are great ways to get a little more bend in the knee, whether it's the muscle that's limiting you or the joint that's limiting you, you'll kind of know when you try two different positions to do that knee bending. So check back to the video a couple days ago where we did quad activation. Today we did more hamstring activation. So we're just trying to get some awareness of the muscles that are a big influence all around that knee. So join my Facebook group. Click the link below this. Join the Facebook group because you will get a notification then anytime I put a video in here all of March, I'm focusing on the knees. So we're just gonna progressively get a little bit, um, like right now we're just really noticing the knees, notice, bringing awareness to the thighs and the knee joint. But we're gonna progress along this whole month so that by the end of the month, you'll have a really good idea how to keep those knees nice and healthy. So I'm Stephanie Carter Kelly, a physical therapist that integrates yoga into everything that I do. So rather than just doing some therapeutic exercises, do some therapeutic exercises for your knee and your thigh with awareness, with the deep breathing. That's where the yoga really plays in. Notice the knees, have some awareness of what you really feel. Rather than having somebody from the outside tell you what you're supposed to feel, what do you feel? How, how is your body responding to, to activating those muscles and testing the range of motion of that joint? Have a great rest of your day. Again, join the Facebook group so that you can follow along this whole month and have healthy knees by the end of March. Namaste.